take some loose notes as we talk. And this is probably going to be very messy during our conversation, but I will clean it up so I can send it all out to you all. And hopefully we can sort of create just a good working list that I can put out there through Google Docs or something of that nature. Um, I am recording this, so if for some reason you need to pop off, um, it'll be available later um, to come back and gather all the brilliant ideas I know that you all are going to have. Um, yes, Catherine, there is audio. So if you can't hear me, then you're not going to hear these instructions. <laughs> and normally we have about four people who can make a webinar run. Um, and we are obviously very short staff. Um, we are making it work just like everybody. Um, I threw together some general categories, but again, we don't have to stick to these. I was just trying to think ahead of um, things that you all might want to discuss. I know how to do programming has been one of those. Um, partnership ideas, if I've heard a couple libraries talk about how they are still trying to reach out to the performers they had booked to see if they would be willing to do some sort of a virtual programming. And then for anybody looking for outreach ideas, again, we don't have to stick to this. This is really your conversation. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to the group. Please share questions, thoughts. Lisa said, I'm thinking of relaunching a teen book club after years of the in-house version being on hiatus. I'm thinking of resurrecting it virtually this summer, but I need better ideas than the ones I've come up with so far, i.e. asynchronous via Goodreads, synchronous via GoToMeetings, um, splitting the FTR list into two and tackling half of the list in June and half in July. So does anybody have some ideas to throw out? And Alex, I see your hand raised. I'm going to unmute you. And I think you are self-muted. So if there was something you wanted to throw in. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I was waiting for that red button to go away. I didn't realize I had to <laughs> press it myself. Hi. Um, I don't have any suggestions as far as that, but I um, I was real quick just going to uh, throw out what we were doing. Um, uh, we're going to be doing a mix of um, Facebook Live and Zoom programming this summer. Um, we reserved Mondays for our virtual performers, so and people that we booked who are offering virtual programs. We're sticking them on Monday afternoons. Um, we're doing virtual story times on Facebook Live Monday through Friday throughout the summer. And um, our 1.30 slot Monday through Friday, um, or um, Tuesday through Friday since Monday is the performer. Um, our youth services librarians are taking turns on a rotation um, and doing a variety of programs. So be it crafts um, or science stuff, art classes. Um, and then we're also doing smaller programs um, like book clubs and um, dance classes through Zoom. Um, and we're listing all of those on our web events. Okay, great, thank you. So sticking with um, Lisa's book club question, I'm kind of, I'm scrolling through the chat right now, so I'm gonna kind of pick out the things related to that conversation, um, and then I'll scroll back up and, make sure we cover everything. Elizabeth suggested, said you could try using a Discord server, so some kind of a virtual chat or screen. And Chris said, multiple user book collection at Tumble Teen, free collection until end of August to your library. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of free resources out there have been just even through the school system. I know that's that's been one of our saving graces just personally here is having access online. 
and Mandy said we've been successful using Discord for our team programming. I've heard a lot of teen librarians and library staff using Discord. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> Crystal said, Elise at TBLC has been collecting a list of virtual performers. I'm sure she will share it with anyone who contacts her. That's a great resource to know. Thank you. Darlene said, we are doing D&D virtually, outdoor events, chalk and bubbles, and virtual programs with craft pickup. Karen said, we got sent a list of performers who are able to possibly uh, do their programs virtually and still working on the logistics. Deanna said, I've started recording baby bounce videos. I'll put up one a week for six weeks, leaving them on our website for the summer. I will record a story time a week. When the new one comes up, the last one comes down. I'm going to video a cartoonist for school aged and teens and we'll leave it up for summer. Um, I will create pre-bagged crafts for pickup with related videos online. If we open, I'll have pre-bagged crafts on the table. That's all I've got. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> um, my staff and I have also been planning on just using performers virtually as our main programs for the summer. I would be happy to give any tips. We're having them do recordings for us as we are not allowed to do live video programs. And I know that's been a challenge. That was brought up in our statistics webinar on Monday, that there are some systems who are not allowed to do live events. And, and please, if you do have a microphone, I'm sure y'all would much rather hear each other's voices than mine. So please feel free to raise your hand and um, I'm happy to keep reading the chat. Um, Karen said, I think we can only do WebEx and the performers can be the host. Otherwise the staff is supposed to do that. Uh, but we won't all be doing the virtual programs and have to share the equipment. And Kelly asked, is anyone doing outreach at community centers? So Casey, uh, we've had a couple of people who raised their hands. Darlene had her just raised a while back and then she uh, had put it down again. Does Darlene wanna talk? And then we've got a whole bunch of hand raises coming oh, through. Yeah, and for some reason, I've stopped getting notifications that. <laughs> okay, so I'm, gonna so jump I'm glad in. you saw that. <laughs> Can yeah. you guys hear me? This is Darlene. Yes. Okay. Um, so for to address the um, outreach in the community centers, um, the sort of outreach that we're doing is just the summer reading logs. Um, so we've created summer reading logs where the kids can read. Um, if they read three books, then they get a free book from us. And then if they read another three books, they get another free book. And then if they read another three books, totaling nine books read, they get basically three free books. Um, we were going to have the final prize, which would have been if they read 10 books, they would have received a final prize. It was supposed to be a... Uh, passed to our local water park, um, but we don't know when they're going to reopen. So we were thinking about doing a raffle where we would buy a certain number of passes um, to either the water park or the local museum and then just raffle that off. So um, those are the prizes that we are offering to outreach. Um, and then we just are asking like Boys and Girls Club um, or whoever might be open because our school district just announced that they are not doing um, the summer camps um, at the schools. And that was our big, um, our big outreach efforts. So we're going to try to reach out to Boys and Girls Club and um, some other local camps that might still be open and then drop off the reading logs and just ask that the camps commit to allowing the kids to have 20 minutes to read a day in order to complete their um, books read. And then towards the end of summer, we'll drop off um, free books um, that are age appropriate. And then that's how we're going to try to continue the summer reading program through outreach. Great. Thank you. So I see Crystal. 
Crystal mm -hmm. French. I'm going to unmute Crystal. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to ask the person that said they were doing outdoor events. Um, how are they um, going to be dealing with social distancing? Is it a staff um, responsibility to monitor it, or um, is it just up to the parents? So, Crystal, it, I don't know if anybody else had a hard time. I couldn't. Um, I don't know if you're sitting somebody very somewhere very windy, but I had a really hard time understanding what you were saying. Is this better? Much better. It must have been something. We're, we're actually having a, a internet guy coming out this morning, so it may have just been my internet. Um, I was wondering, someone had mentioned outdoor events, chalk and bubbles, and I was wondering how they were going to do um, the social distancing. Is it going to be a staff uh, responsibility to make sure that families social distance from each other, or is it just going to be up to the families? Okay, thank you. Um, and I will have to scroll through my chat to see who it was that brought that up. But um, you know who you are. So if you would like to raise your hand and answer that or put it in the chat. I've got two. It's Darlene. Two. Darlene said that was me. Okay. So Darlene, you are unmuted if you'd like to. Okay. Um, so... The first event that we're actually doing is um, is going to be next Wednesday, and this is in an effort to kind of try to provide programming while allowing the libraries to still be closed. Um, so we're doing a chalk and bubbles. Uh, we're doing the first event we're doing is next Wednesday, which is Sphero painting, and we're allowing for two families to come at a time, and we're blocking off. Um, 1030 to 1230 in a covered area in front of the library um, where we basically give one tablet to one family and then a tablet to the next family and we space them out and then they can create like their Jackson Pollock abstract art painting through the Spiro robots. Um, so that's the first one that we're testing out and then we are doing the chalk and bubbles I believe um, also next week or the week after. And I believe the the idea behind that was they would basically hand each family a piece of chalk and then kind of designate their boxes that they could fill in with the chalk. And then once they're finished or even during the program, we would just have bubbles. And it's just kind of the first step to letting folks kind of try out social distancing. Um, and I mean, it's obviously not a big event, but it allows for folks to come out and do chalk and have some bubble time. Great, thank you. All right, and Amanda has her hand up. So Amanda, I'm going to unmute you. And you are self-muted, so you may have to unmute yourself on the other end. Do you have Amanda? Okay. okay. Then we're gonna move on to Amy Jane. I'm gonna unmute you, and then we will get back to the chat, I promise everybody. Amy Jane is self-muted. Now can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're a medium-sized system. I'm down in Lee County. Um, so we've had to change. We have we've had to change everything pretty much. So um, we have taken it on our program online with Read Squared. Um, and we're kind of integrating programming into the missions aspect of Read Squared. So um, there are activities that kids can do, and we we're really mindful of um, what kids and teens have access to and what parents have access to. Uh, so common, common household items. Um, and, and also workarounds. So if they don't have Legos to build a castle, 
um, they can get a piece of paper and draw a picture of a castle. So we, we are allowing them to modify on the activity uh, so that they can do it. So that's kind of one way we're doing programming. We're also offering an online story time uh, once a week, and we're working with our presenters that we had booked to offer um, a virtual program. I'm, we're just not quite sure how that, I, I don't even think the virtual presenters are quite sure on how that's going to um, work yet either. I think we're all trying to sort that out. Um, so because it's all online, we were worried about reaching our kids um, who do not have access to um, the internet. Read Squared is available as an app, so um, we're confident that most kids can um, access it, but we are providing activity booklets with a reading challenge inside of them um, to all grab-and-go meal locations on May 27th, so right before those end, and it goes into the summer break site. So um, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure type of challenge, so we're really excited about that. And then we've worked with the school district and our Parks and Rec uh, Department. So the school district is going to promote it as a supplemental learning activity. Even though there won't be um, summer school this, this summer, they're doing it virtually. Um, so kids will have access to the app through, um, hopefully, their Google Classrooms. So you know, it's really just a lot of out-of-box thinking. And just a, the one silver lining is I think that this has opened up um, possibilities and partnerships and collaboration um, with folks who may not have had the time or <laughs> ability to do it before. Now everybody's kind of like looking for ways. So, um, and right now our libraries aren't open. We're just doing curbside and we don't know when we're going to open. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Great. Thank you. It's a good thing that uh, library staff tend to be pretty naturally creative and innovative, isn't it? <laughs> and Mandy has her hand open. Mandy, I have unmuted you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm from the St. Petersburg Library System. We have seven libraries, um, just to kind of give you our size. Um, my colleague and I have done a lot of work on setting up the performers, and we've come up with sort of a list of requirements that we send when we book them that I'd be happy to share with you that you could get out to everyone um, because we put a lot of work into it. Like our, locate, our system, we're not allowed to go live, so we're having them send uh, recordings. Um, and we're asking that they require no editing when they send them to us. Um, like I said, I'd be happy to share that information. That would be great, thank you. All right, so we've gone through all the hand raises, so I'm gonna bounce back to the chat. Um, this is all really great information. And what I'm gonna do too, after we're all done, is I'm gonna go back through the chat because I know that we're probably not gonna be able to get through everything, um, but I'm gonna pull that information out so that, again, we sort of walk away with a, a cumulative resource here, um, just some brainstorming notes. And we're also going to have uh, two more of these next week. One will be focused on teen programming and the other more for the younger kids, just to help break it out a little bit more as well. So if we don't get to all the conversations today, we do have two more opportunities as well. And to plug, if you're on Facebook, we do have the Flip Exchange Facebook group, which is a closed group for youth services staff in Florida that people have been sharing information on as well. Um, so Catherine said, we hired Page Turner's Adventures for their affordable virtual 10-week programs with daily events. And we've got some more book clubs going on. Uh, several people mentioned that they're using Read Squared for summer reading tracking. Karen said, I wanted to do my magnet program where we have cutouts of superheroes, such as Harry Potter or Thor, and then glue them to a disc and then magnet on top of that, something super simple. And Shantiria, I really hope I did not just mispronounce your name. I see your hand up. I'm going to unmute you. 
Great. Thank you. You pronounced it perfectly. Oh, um, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm from a municipal library, North Miami uh, Beach Public Library. And for people who are feeling just left at sea, you might want to check with your consortium if you belong to one. Uh, Cephalin is going to purchase Read Squared for all of the member libraries who want to use it. And they're also planning on offering virtual programming and they will host it. So if your library doesn't allow you to host or if you don't have the capability to host virtual programming, check with your consortium because they might have a plan in place or might be gearing up to offer that for you. Great, thank you. I know I've received a couple of emails about that as well. And um, we really appreciate our MLCs because they are, it's a lot easier for them to shift on a dime than it is for us up here in the state. Um, Elizabeth, so we are using Reader Zone. Amanda said, no outreach. I tried to give the schools who have food pickups information, but even those schools can't have any programming out of the vehicles. Yeah, I know that's tough too, just with the school, you know, the schools are having to take a lot of extra steps when they give out those food, the give out the food bags to make sure that they're, they're very, very careful. Courtney said, I would love to have a list of virtual performers. So I will um, I will reach out to TBLC and see if they are willing to share that with me. And if they are, I'm happy to send that out. Then Darlene said for outreach, we're dropping off reading logs and then drop off prizes for counselors to distribute. Some more conversation about Read Squared. Rhonda said, we're doing virtual story times for summer. Do we need to worry about copyright on books? So that's a great question. Um, a lot of publishers have relaxed some of their copyright rules for the time being. Um, and I'm going to send out, I've shared it before um, through one of my newsletters and out on social media, but there is a wonderful Google Doc that somebody I think in New Jersey or in that sort of area of the country started for the purpose of keeping um, all of the publishers information on file kind of who's relaxing what and what their stipulations are um, and it sort of morphed into this great Google Doc that folks from all over the country have been adding to um, so you do still need to worry about copyright, but each publisher has their own rules for how they are relaxing it. So some have just relaxed it for a certain number of months. Some are allowing people to read them live stream, but they have to delete the video after a certain amount of time. For some publishers, you have to use very specific language at the beginning of your video saying that you are reading this with the permission of whatever that publisher's name is. And so because there's so many publishers out there, just really make sure you're checking um, whatever the rules are for that publisher's books because they are they are as different as every library system in Florida. Nancy said, we can't use Discord for our library system due to our IT security. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of challenge in getting around some of the security issues for certain systems. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to find something that'll work. Amy said, we are making one Facebook video a week story time that will include a craft. They will pick up the craft in advance first come first served while supplies last. We will also do a weekly drawing for kids and teens with what we already had in house. I will bag all these take home items in Ziplocs in advance so the contents are quarantined, but I think passive or self-directed will be my saving grace. I need ideas for that. Yes, for those who are in on the statistics website, we introduced a whole new, a whole new realm of stats for these, what we're calling self-directed programs. So if your library is not able to do live programming, we're still going to collect numbers for the things that aren't live. So you still get the credit for doing programming, even if it looks a little differently. Um, 
Chris said, I'm doing outreach, daycare provider is hosting, I'm popping in for virtual story time. Yeah, daycares have not been shut down. They are still operating. Individual um, areas might have said that they need to be shut down or individual daycares may have chosen to close, but they are considered, considered essential. So that might be another, another outreach location. Elizabeth said, I've done some origami videos that went well through a Facebook Live. That's really cool and interesting. Especially because I can't even properly make a paper airplane. So <laughs> origami is amazing to me. Um, Deanna said, I'm hoping we will open because I have a thousand books to be earned by participants. Wow. <laughs> Who's baby? Again, I'm I'm pretty far back in the chat. I think that was Alex's little ones, which if you were in, uh, Alex was one of our workshop presenters, and I know in her slide she had a picture of her with her her munchkins. Kara said, "I think kids are virtually overloaded. I'm doing my toddler story time pre-recorded online. Other that, other than that, I'm going to create take and make bags with craft and activities inside. We're going to subscribe to Read Squared for reading logs. Kara, just speaking as a parent, I totally agree. Um, my child is so tired of doing virtual, virtual things. It is not not his cup of tea. Um, he'll sit and play Minecraft all day, but when it comes to learning online he's 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 tired <laughs> and amy i see your hand up i'm going to unmute you you are self-muted okay um one thing about read squared is i'm i'm a mom of three and i totally get the the overwhelming amount of online content right now that our kids are exposed to um, so in Read Squared, you can create missions, and those missions can be offline and screen, like the activities in them can be offline and screen free, which is what we've been focusing on. Um, and then they, there's a way to print out those activities. So what I'm telling people is that print out the mission with activities, then you're done. You don't have to go back online for the week. You can just go and do the activities with your kid and then record all your reading and like what which activities were completed at the end and really the parent doesn't even have to or the child doesn't even have to do the actual logging the parent can do it if they wanted to so that kind of that's one nice thing about read squared is that you can really make it as, as flexible as you want it to be when it comes to screen time great thank you i love that Yeah, and I know, so I know that a lot of libraries do coding clubs. And if you've used code.org in the past, which is what, when I when I was in the field, that was what we used for our coding club. They, um, they had what they call unplugged activities. So it would teach those coding concepts, but with, an, with a hands-on activity away from the computer. And so some of those activities are just, great even if you don't necessarily have a coding uh, a coding club um, because they teach you know critical thinking skills and how to problem solve and so there that may be just another great free resource just to pull some some ideas from um, Amy said we had a student worker that taught us cloud dough <gasps> oh I love cloud dough I did that with uh, my kids when or my son when he was younger um, she said, and I did that in a video already, but maybe I'll do it again. It's hair conditioner and cornstarch. You can add food coloring, just get yummy smelling conditioner, uh, cornstarch, mix it up and make this soft dough. See, that's interesting. So I've made cloud dough, but it was equal parts flour and oil. And it comes together as well.
Amy said, I'm not permitted to do this idea, but I wanted to have the programmer come and live stream, and then we could have a drawing for one lucky family to be in the audience. We have a big program room, so it would be possible to socially distance. Karen said, we've been doing online story times that uses Hoopla, so the parents can check out the books. We also have a program called BCL Explorers, where there is a staff member explaining a science experiment they did one about the sun rotating on its axis using an or an or gain and a fork, or is that a typo? And Nancy said, Karen, can you share your web page where you are offering the science experiments? As a mom to a science kid, yes, I would also like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah they record the story time and then read the books but have the hoopla so the parents can follow along not sure how it all works and I'm scrolling through chat um, Karen did ask are this the story times are not very long maybe 10 minutes yeah, I've seen some libraries just do a quick and then, you know, a quick five, 10 minute read. And then I've seen some go in for a 30, 45 minute whole story time, music, that sort of thing. Amanda asks, would it be possible for all the Google link shared information to be collated and added to the transcript? Yeah, I'm going to pull all the chat information so that hopefully we can create sort of one, one nifty document. Yeah, and Amy brought up just how her team looks different right now. So I know that there are a lot of libraries who um, are working with a, a slim group of people right now. We have a few people in the chat who talked about Beanstack. Leanne said, for teens, there is this company that makes escape rooms online. I know Breakout EDU is one that a lot of schools use, and I'm starting to see libraries jumping in there. And I actually um, watched a Zoom video in Teen Library Underground where someone wanted to test out doing a live escape room using Zoom, but also using Breakout EDU. Amy said, my summer story times on Facebook will be copyright free so they can stay up for the week. I'm using Gutenberg to find source material and keeping the story part short. Yeah, that's always an option if you don't want to risk copyright infringement is fine, <laughs> find things in the public domain. Alex, um, Alex has her hand up, I'm going to unmute her. Hi. Um, I saw Amy. Amy just asked um, how children are reacting to virtual uh, programs. And I, sorry, you can probably hear my baby again. Apologies. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm home right now, obviously. Um, so the way that we've been noticing how kids are reacting to virtual programs has really depended on um, how the program is presented. Um, when we're doing our programs, we're trying to ask lots of questions. Um, during the video, even if it's being recorded, um, kind of like Mr. Rogers style, you know, how he would like pause and wait for an answer. And I know like on the recording side for the presenter, it feels really weird to have that pause and have that like empty, <laughs> empty air. 
Um, but we're really noticing that the kids um, react more that way. Um, when I'm doing it live, I'm also asking them to um, put their kids' names like in the chat or in the comments because, oh my goodness, like when we say their name, they flip out and they're so excited and they're like Aww. into it. Um, I'm also reminding my staff to get a little bit closer to the camera than they would normally think to um, because it helps them um, be more engaged and sorry, my kids just came in from outside too. Um, be more engaged um, and, and closer um, to the kids like in their space. So that's what's been helping us. Great, thank you for sharing. Um, Amy said the stats webinar was so helpful. Um, I'm really glad. I know, I know it was a lot of new information at a time where things are changing for everybody on a on a rolling basis. Um, Deanna did ask if if you all can view the stats webinar. It was recorded. It is up on our YouTube page. Um, I've also emailed it out to anybody who was registered, and then I'm going to email it out to everybody who's on my flip forward list as well. Um, and I put it in the flip exchange Facebook group. So I'm trying to get that information out. We're also having another live question and answer time because there were so many people who were unable to attend the live uh, webinar. That filled up fast. It was full in less than 12 hours. I know Dolly had said that she was sitting there just watching it, the numbers get higher by the second. Lisa said, our library is using Beanstack and we're asking them to read one book and complete one activity from a large list of choices to be entered into the grand prize drawing. For each additional five books or five activities, they will get an extra entry. We'll also give out prizes to the top 10 participants in each age group. And Leanne has her hand raised. So Leanne, I'm unmuting you. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Awesome. Um, I'm at the North Miami Beach Public Library. Um, I'm the head of youth services there, and we have been talking obviously a lot about uh, teen and children's and separating out the programs. And for us, children's is a little bit easier because we do so much during the year and so much every summer. We have a summer camp and all that stuff. So we have a ton of contacts in that area and summer reading um, digitally where, you know, we're using Read Squared and we have a lot of um, programming ideas that we tend to do on a regular basis. But for the teens, it's been a little bit more of a um, think this through this year because um, a lot of the teens, they tend to come out for things like um, pizza parties and stuff like that or movies. So um, this year we're going to do, um, I spoke to a couple local fast food restaurants. They're going to um, work with us on coupons so we can give out to the teens for, you know, reading. So they get an incentive and the incentive is still food, even though it's not from us. And um, some different, maybe um, somebody suggested Amazon cards. That way they get a prize, but it's like a $5 Amazon and it's something that they can use and that they can choose on their own. Um, the other thing that we're doing is um, we're offering, so the badges on Read Squared are customizable. So if the teen attends, for instance, like a uh, Zoom meeting movie, you know, like where we sh where we show a movie or something like that, then they can earn a badge that way so that there's more ways that they can earn badges by participating. And then with that participation, that's when they earn their um, rewards and stuff. The escape room, by the way, um, a local library in my area did it um, for their teens and it is awesome it is so much fun it's super cool so um we're definitely going to do that for our library as well and um in addition the we're, we're allowing for like our um kickoff day people to come by and pick up these packs that we've already created that give them options throughout the entire summer that every time they let's say um because you know obviously i bought all that stuff from the, the collaborative summer programming and so Let's say, for instance, they do one of those art projects or something like that, and they post it on our Instagram with like a hashtag that earns them a badge too. you know, ways that they they're, they're getting badges for things that they are participating in to help us boost their participation. 
Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know we, we've got so many of these summer reading materials now that, um, that people are trying to figure out how to re reuse and repurpose. And, you know, the great thing is that because CSLP has relaxed their usage rights that, you know, even if for some reason you're not able to use them this summer, you can continue to use them during other parts of the year. Um, and bookmarks don't go bad. Alex said, I've been doing Kids Art Lab on Facebook Live Weekly where I teach about an artist and do some art with them. I'm using OBS to present. It's been so helpful. And then she included a link. Deanna said, uh, Alex, you just reminded me of all the lab books, Art Outdoor Kitchen. Thanks. Rhonda asked, where can we get some music to drop in videos, not background music, get up and dance type that is free or low cost for licensing? Um, I'm sure, please, if you've got in great, great resources, please feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. Um, I know Go Noodle is one that's really great and fun. Um, our school system has been using it. Um, I know several of us, when we did summer reading workshops, we used it, um, but it's, and it's curated, so it's safe. And they also have not just the get up and dance type stuff, but they also have videos for um, teaching breathing exercises for kids and sort of that quiet, you know, how to, how to slow the heart rate down, which I think is good. Um, Darlene, so we asked Lori Berkner and she gave us permission as well. Nice. So what I'm hearing is y'all are friends with Lori Berkner. <laughs> um, Deanna, some music will get you yanked on YouTube due to copyright. You're better off with public domain. Yeah, I've even heard of people who have had permission granted by local musicians mm -hmm. and they've had all the they've had all the right permissions and YouTube still pulled them down um, and they had to go through a whole you know rigmarole to get the videos restored even though they had permission from the outset so uh, this is Dolly uh, and you all probably already know this but take a look at the Creative Commons licensing. You can get all kinds of good music from all sorts of places, including YouTube itself. But you want to take a look at the Creative Commons license that is attributed to it. Um, so if you get like a CC0, you can do anything you want to with it, uh, that kind of thing. And I'm just scrolling through the chat. I love how talkative you all are. Lisa asked, what's the name of the company for escape rooms? Breakout is pricey. So if you have any um, other breakout, you know, escape room uh, software, suggestions please feel free to throw those in the chat um lisa i also know that some some people have actually started creating their own using google docs um they're setting it up you know very much like a choose your own adventure and so um there's also ways to do it if you wanted to create one And I'm scrolling through. There was some conversation about virtual gift cards and coupons for incentives. Lots of love for Lori Berkner. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, several people saying lots of escape rooms and Google Docs. Um, Riley said at Sarasota, Sarasota County Library, we've been using Google Forms for escape rooms. Megan said, I know there's a Harry Potter escape room out there that they have given permission to share. I can't remember the name of it though. Riley said, it's very fun for the children in the library and making them, and you can do basically anything you're interested. And Dolly shared in the chat, YouTube has an audio library for folks to use with their YouTube videos. And I'm at the end of the chat. <laughs> There was definitely some in-between conversation of people talking with one another. Um, Riley shared a link. Riley, does that take you to one of the, the escape rooms? Great, thank you. Darlene wanted to know, how are people advertising their virtual programs? Facebook premiere or events? Amy said, I am premiering my videos and our marketing coordinator is making events for those. Leanne said, Facebook and Insta, the Instagram. Um, Karen said, I've done a few escape rooms on Facebook. Not too bad, very simple. Um, and then going back to the advertising, email and Facebook, um, Facebook for our system and via email. Amy said, I was live streaming, but I didn't have anyone else to turn the camera on and off. <laughs> Alex said, Facebook and our website events calendar, Instagram. Darlene asks, are folks correcting auto generation for closed captioning? Can't type. Um, Amy said, I don't know how to correct the auto generation. Is there a way to do that? Alex said, I want to, but haven't had the time yet. Elizabeth said, Facebook can't caption me. The words were all wrong for my story time. Darlene said, we found this to be a bit time consuming through Facebook Premiere. Uh, Mandy, no, Facebook has made some funny captioning mistakes. Kara said, where is the list of publisher permissions? Um, Kara, I will send that in my follow-up email so that way you have it. Yeah, Crystal, we're gonna uh, make sure we pull the chat information um, in that way, because there's so much great conversation happening in there that it it's not possible for me to definitely capture it all verbally, and we wanna make sure that we get that information. And Kelly, you have your hand up. I am unmuting you right now. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, now, if I Facebook Live my story times, do I have to worry about any of the publishers? So it depends on the publisher. Um, yes, there are still restrictions that library staff are expected to follow, but it's different for each publisher. And so I'm going to share out um this list and this was put together by other people but it just seems to be a great resource um but any um any book you want to read you can check the publisher and see what they are specifically saying because it's different for every publisher um some will only let you put it up for educational purposes if it's in a closed setting um, some can only stay up for a certain amount of time. Some you have to specifically mention that you're reading it with the permission, with their permission. Um, and so it's just, it's different for each publisher, but there are definitely still rules in play. Does that help? Elizabeth did bring up a, a good 
point that you don't necessarily have to contact the publishers to ask for permission because I think at this point they've probably all went ahead and, and put out their information. Oh, correction, Elizabeth said so you still have to contact them, Macmillan, Macmillan, you don't. Yeah, I know, I think there's been several publishers who, if I had to guess, they were probably getting inundated. Um, but there, yeah, there have been a few who just said, here are the rules, don't, you know. Because there was somebody who was originally even just wanting um, people to notify them if they were going to do it. And then like a week later, they came back and were like, on second thought, you don't need to email us anymore. Um, Amy said they have an online forum with ISBN and title for librarians. I think they're being pretty easygoing. Um, Amy said, so I don't have to email anyone, just pop it in the form. Don't even have to put the date it will air. And then further up, somebody else had made a, um, a point that you know they can't stay up indefinitely and i think that's been pretty true for for any publisher that i've seen great point deanna deanna said and just because an author says it's okay doesn't mean it's okay with the publishers and that is a great point because there were a lot of authors coming out saying you have my permission to do this that and the other and the publishers were like mm, except that it doesn't actually belong to you anymore Darlene asked, what platforms are people using for virtual book clubs or multiple attendee virtual programs? I know I've seen discussion about Zoom and Discord. Yeah, Alex said Zoom. Many said, I'm hoping the publishers put together affordable licensing packages that give libraries permission to use their books for virtual story times. Going back to the live live book clubs, um, Nancy said we are going to use Microsoft Teams. Darlene said, if you use Zoom, are you simply making it password protected? <laughs> That's a good question. I think we've all heard the horror stories of um, people popping in. Um, there are some, some people saying that they're not allowed to use Zoom. Karen said, I've heard horror stories of trolls coming into Zoom. What? Yeah, well, and I think a lot of people too, whether they're using free Zoom or not, were putting all of the login information out so it was widely available to anybody. <laughs> Um, Alex said, we're going to have patrons register and then email them the link and password to the Zoom meetup. Meet up. Um, and Deanna said, that's because the moderators didn't close the door. <laughs> and Amy shared the Penguin form. So it is 10.59. Um, so we are one minute shy of, of being at our official end time. This was absolutely wonderful. I know it was it was kind of nonstop. We went from zero to a hundred in less than a minute. Um, so I I hope we at least sort of touched on the things that everybody was wanting to talk about. Um, we had such a large group. We do have again two more of these, and if you all decide you want more than just two more, please let me know. I'm happy to schedule. Um, can I put the info for the, I will put it in the email, um, mainly because again, I'm working, I'm telecommuting. And so I'm afraid that I will make my system cranky if I try to do too much at one time. Um, so I will make sure that I link that information in the follow-up email that I'll get to you all later today. Um, this, I agree, Elizabeth, this was awesome. Uh, we knew that these conversations were happening. We knew that people were planning. Um, and sometimes it can be really hard to connect with people outside of your immediate system. Um, and so I, 
this was very educational for me because it kind of helps make sure that I'm looking for resources for you all in the right places. Um, <laughs> thanks, Leanne. Um, it, I, I agree, Amy, it is great to talk with you services people. Um, because I think we, we tend to be uh, the higher percentage of extroverts in our in our uh, profession. <laughs> Leanne, I agree. It, Jana left some very big shoes to fill. Um, so we, we are moving forward and trying to do the best we can. Um, so thank you, everybody. Again, we are going to pull all of the chat information because that is a wealth of information. Um, hopefully we will see you all online next week or anybody who, who feels like they still need to, to chat and talk, um, even if you just need to socialize for the sake of socializing. <laughs> so thank you all for all of your hard work and please feel free to share your stories with us because um, we like to hear them too. We know you're all doing great things and you are all being, you are all a pillar for your community and it's more evident now as people are in crisis so thank you y'all have a good rest of your week and enjoy your weekend <laughs>